Moving to university is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. And getting the feel for a place can be really difficult, especially if you can't visit in person. So today I wanted to show you around the University of Dundee, a green city campus in the sunniest city in Scotland. Dundee absolutely has my heart and it is my pleasure to show you around. So whether you're moving here soon or you just want a nosy, you're very welcome to come along. So in this video, I want to give you the full tour. I'm going to have a slow walk around campus and yeah, this is probably going to be really boring if you don't care about Dundee and you're not moving here. So feel free to click off. I have lots of other videos that you can check out. I'm also going to post out things I wish I knew before I'd gone to university up here. So if you want to watch that, don't feel bad. I will see you in the next video. With that, I say grab yourself a drink, make yourself comfortable and let me show you around. So this is the front of the train station, right down at the waterfront. I wanted to start this video off in the centre of town and then wander you over through to campus because this is probably going to be a lot of people's first impression of the city and it's good to get a feel of what the city's like. So we're just heading towards the waterfront now. I'm going to spin you around, tell you the landmarks, so hopefully you can grab your bearings and then we will toddle up onto campus. And finally, I will take you out to the West End and I'm going to show you all of the university accommodation options, all of the main buildings on campus that you're going to need to know. And I thought we would just have a little chit chat along the way, just about student life and some tips I have for private renting, for example. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. So it's really hot and sunny today, it's unusually so, and campus is going to be very quiet because no one is here yet. It's August and class doesn't start for another month, so it's going to be incredibly quiet. Also, we are five months into coronavirus, so everyone's being very cautious. So that is the V&A Museum on the left, that's what we tempt all the tourists in. That's the Discovery Boat on the right. And behind is the Tay River. So that is the River Tay to the south and pointing over to the north is the Law Hill. So these are the kind of two main landmarks and if you ever get lost wandering around campus just know that north is usually uphill and south is usually downhill so hopefully that can help you out. So to put this in the context of Google Maps, we are at the red pin and campus is highlighted in yellow. So campus is ringed in by roads that I've highlighted in pink and if you go to Google Maps you should really quickly be able to spot where campus is because it's circled by these roads. So Dundee is a small city on the east coast of Scotland. It's an hour north of Edinburgh up the coast and the weather is pretty good here. It's the sunniest city in Scotland so you can't complain. <laughs> There are two unis here. Aberty is most famous for video games and Dundee is most famous for life sciences. So the student satisfaction here is pretty good. The lifestyle of being a student in Dundee is nice because everything's so close, it's got a real campusy feel and everything's very affordable. So I did my undergrad here in life sciences and now I'm a postgrad. So yes, it was good enough for me to want to stick around. When I was getting ready to move to Dundee, I was really terrified. Honestly, the online information was patchy and even though I'd been to an open day, I still felt like I didn't know anything. I didn't know anyone who was there. So it was really stressful. And that was not factoring in a global pandemic. I can only imagine the extra anxieties that that is bringing. And so many people are completely unable to come and visit for an open day. So any international students, you probably want to fly into Edinburgh. It's just the best connected place to fly into. And you can catch the airport bus that drops you off right there at the red sign. So you can see there a bus is driving round to the right that is heading to the main bus station, which is about two blocks over in that direction. So here I'm gonna zoom you all the way up the hill towards the centre of town. So this is us at Debenhams Junction. That direction, east, is into the centre of town. And here over to the west is where campus is. 
So this is Dundee's High Street. Here it's called Nethergate and then it turns into being called Perth Road even though it's one long straight road. So Perth Road has loads of pubs, loads of restaurants. This here red on the left is called Greg Shows. It's a secondhand music shop and it is wonderful. I would recommend. There's also bakeries, green grocers, butchers, post office. Everything you want is probably going to be on Perth Road. Now Wee Mexico there on the left is very yummy for Mexican food. So this Perth Road here carries on for miles and campus is on the right hand side up to the north. Here is a church and the DCA. So the DCA is Dundee Contemporary Arts. There is a cinema in here. They don't always show kind of the, the normal films that are being released. They do show some really interesting films and their film times are a bit funky. But it is a really lovely place. Over here is one of the Clark's Bakery places. Clark's Bakery is probably the most famous bakery in Dundee. They do have another site that's kind of in an industrial estate. That is the 24 hour bakery. So that is where a lot of people go for their midnight snacks. And along Perth Road in exactly this direction, there are both Seabrays and Westmark accommodation. Here, Oshibori is my favorite restaurant. There's a wee alleyway down to the left through the gate and oh, it's amazing Japanese food. So I'm just gonna head up north here onto Park Place. So we're just heading into campus. This building is probably the building you will matriculate in. It's called Boner Hall. <laughs> yeah, some Ponzi people try and say Bonner Hall. I don't know, I find it quite charming. So matriculation is really important. You need to turn up with the right paperwork and you just get handed your student card. It's nothing too tricky. Just remember to bring all the correct paperwork and freshers, you will be given a time slot. Don't be late, you're gonna be fined. And also remember to matriculate online every year afterwards. So you just go online, fill in your details, tell them where you live and say, I'm definitely back for this year and you'll be good to go. Oh, and freshers, you're gonna be given your student card in a lanyard. The easiest way to spot a fresher is to look out for the people who are wearing the lanyards. <laughs> so you do you, but just so you know, most students don't wear the lanyards for very long. <laughs> so this building here is the Scrimger building. It's for social sciences. I've only been in twice, but I think it is the most beautiful building on campus. I absolutely love it. And straight up this road is the dental building. So the last kind of road, the last building on the left there is the dental building. So we're going to head around to the west and the building on your left is the tower building and the building on your right is Carnelli. So this is the home of life sciences. And if you're ever bored, there is a zoology museum in the basement of this building that's really worth a nosy. You just go down the stairs to the left. So on your left is the tower building. The room layout is quite sensible, it's not too easy to get lost in there. And there's lots of IT suites in the basement, there's some stairs down to the left. And the top floor, there's a cafe with an amazing view, I think it's like the 11th floor or something. So around here is the global room. It's a really chilled place, they do kind of cultural events and they often have free food. The last event I went to in the global room was a dog walk. It's like a mental health pause for thought event. And they had paw shaped biscuits. It was all very sweet. It's a really friendly place. Here is the old medical school. So they have the life science labs in this building. They are up many flights of stairs because everything is double height. It's a really old building. And uh, that's not the main door as much as it looks it. Here is the college shop. It's not usually gated shut. They have sandwiches and snacks in there, so it's a good place to grab lunch if you're on this side of campus. So I'm just gonna take you on to Small's Wind and then we will walk up north to the library. So up these steps here is the Uni Health Services. They do sexual health services and mental health services. 
<laughs> I've avoided you, don't worry. That's all right, I don't mind. You want to be in the campus tour? <laughs> no, uh, no, we're not playing Pokemon, are <laughs> Last time I was up here, I was a zombie, so there you go. Ah, close call. <laughs> campus is pretty friendly. It's not unusual to have a wee chat to someone in the street or at the bus stop or I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of normal to have a little chat to strangers. <laughs> and uh, he said he was a zombie. I'm going to take you to the library, but I'm just going to take you on a detour here. He said he was a zombie. That was on a yearly event where they do a zombie apocalypse. It's a charity thing where a bunch of zombies wreak havoc around campus for the day. <laughs> So there are tons of green spaces on campus, just like this one. This is one of my favourite places on campus and it actually took me until third year to find it. I was just never nosy enough to take the detour. So that's the library. It's really close by and it's lovely for a little lunch stop or a little break from the library. So I'm going to head up the hill and show you the library front door. There are tons of bike shelters all over campus. So healthcare for anyone who's not familiar, in Scotland we have a national health service, the NHS, and everything is free when you access it so there's no bills handed to you. Just register with a GP. So we have three GPs that are nearby, we have Hawk Hill, Rye Hill or Nethergate, and I think they're all fine. You just, if you want an appointment with your GP, you need to phone at 8 o'clock in the morning and keep phoning until someone picks up. For international students, I would check for your specific country, but I think if you're here over three months, you should be good. So this straight ahead is the engineering buildings. This is the Fulton building. And Dalhousie is straight ahead. I will show you that later. And now, here is the main library entrance. So you basically go in, you scan your student card, and then you head on in. So there is a ground floor, a first floor, and a second floor, and the library split off into quiet sections, group study sections, and it's all really clearly labeled about how loud you can be. Um, and over here is my favorite part of campus. It is the free shop. So if you guys saw my what I love and what I hate about University of Dundee, you will have seen that little window and that is exactly where it is. I think you just head in the door on the right. I've never been when it's been in this building. There was a building that they demolished um, that it used to be in. So I've not been in the new location, but I have used it before. Here is the chaplaincy. They have a lot of really cool events, a lot of free events, a lot of soups. So if you want to grab yourself some free food, then head in there. Actually, there's a lot of free food events on campus. The Global Room and the Chaplaincy seem to be the two biggest providers. Just having a little creep on some people playing volleyball here. So this is coming on to Campus Green. They do lots of events here. I've been to an alpaca petting zoo, huge trampolines come out, an inflatable assault course, outdoor movie theatre. It's pretty fantastic. If they're doing anything fun, it's probably here. So the red door on your left is the inquiry centre. If you need to know where something is, need paperwork or help with anything like losing your student card, they are the people for you. And just past that is the student union entrance. And straight ahead is, well the bar is down just now but it's usually the main campus shop. Just to the right is Belmont accommodation. So everything is really really close by. I am so sorry that I can't take you inside the Union right now. It's closed for summer and also coronavirus, so I'm going to do my best to describe it to you. So as you enter these main doors, you've got a reception on your left. Then you're met with stairs to go up or to go down. If you go down, you're at the very bottom. This is level one. There is a nightclub called Mono. It's pretty classic nightclub. And then in the daytime, they turn it into a cafe. If you were to go up the stairs from reception, then you get to the third floor. This has Liar Bar in it. It's kind of a classic sports bar. They have lots of TVs, lots of leather sofas, and a gorgeous view out over the River Tay, which I will show you around the back of the Union. If you go up one more floor, then you get to the kind of pool table area. There is a cocktail bar that turns into a karaoke bar sometimes and there's some fast food. There's also a place called The Hive, which is like a student help center in there. 
And then if you go up to the very top, the fifth floor, there is an alternative nightclub. So they do pop mixes or rock mixes. They just do the different event of the night. So there's five floors to the union. They all have some sort of pub or club and hopefully at some point in the future, nightclubs will be able to safely reopen again. I don't see it being any time soon though. This is all of the halls on campus, by the way. Belmont is on the left, Belmont Tower up top and Heathfield straight ahead. I do not see any sort of large group gatherings happening this year, but there are a lot of yearly events that happen. So obviously there's usually Freshers' Week in September, there is Refreshers Week that happens in January when everyone comes back from their holidays. There is St. Patrick's Day that happens, I think that's 17th of March. Oh, and there's a car park rave. I will tell you about that when we are over at Heathfield. <sighs> there is a lot going on and I don't really know how things are going to work with COVID. I don't really have any more information. I did try and look up Freshers Week and there isn't that much out there. So hopefully you will still be able to get a wonderful undergrad or postgrad experience. So there's a cash machine back there. It should be free to take cash out in Scotland and any bank will let you take out from any cash machine. If you're looking to open a bank account, I personally go with Bank of Scotland. I quite like them. If you're an international student, you might want to think about Santander just because they are more international. And the tennis courts are on the left. If you live in these Belmont flats, you will know the sound of the tennis courts. This is Belmont Flats number 37 on the very, very left at the bottom, all the way up to flat number 60, Belmont on the top right. And depending on which bedroom number you are, you can either look south or you can look north. I lived in Belmont in my first year and I loved it. I thought it was the perfect choice. I could basically go to the Union for a night out. They didn't always take my phone. Like I felt safe enough to just leave my phone at home. Um, and a few times I did run from the Union to my flat in like a minute. It was super quick to get home. It felt really, really safe. It was so cool. So here is the Belmont Courtyard. Flat number one is kind of straight ahead on the bottom. And then we whisk all the way around anti-clockwise up to flat number 60. So the building ahead is where you've got your little laundrette. There's just a bunch of washing machines and dryers. I personally never use the dryers. They always seemed a little bit minky to me. Up here is Belmont Tower. Also, um, be warned, if you live in halls, the fire alarm will go off all the time. <laughs> if you make any smoke, like aerosol, can, deodorant, too much steam if you're straining your hair, uh, I don't know, the fire alarms just go off all the time. And Two big fire engines will come into the courtyard and you will all be standing out in the cold and yeah, it's no fun. There is also a bunch of cages that have got the bins in them so you can all fight about who didn't take the bins out. Good times. Obviously, I don't have a key to uh, actually show you inside because I don't live here but there is a secure entry and in my year that building was where all the nursing students were put together generally got to know everyone in my building, by face at least. Um, honestly, nowhere on campus is more than like a 10 minute walk away, so I personally didn't bother with a bike. It's probably further to find a place to put your bike than it is to just walk door to door. So here's the ISE. She's not looking in her best, uh, missing her E. That does usually say ISE. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, everything has been closed for coronavirus. At this moment for oh four or five months so no one's been in the gym in four or five months so she's looking a little bit dusty on the outside but the gym is lovely it's pretty big there is loads of clubs so if you kind of come in this revolving door there is a reception area all the way along on the left there's a few gym halls around to the left you can go up the stairs to squash courts a dance studio and on the right hand side this whole area over here is a huge two level gym so there's weights on the ground floor there's running machines and then you go up and there's loads of cycles and rowers so the gym is pretty big oh there's also a huge like sports hall that they do a bunch of exams into i don't play much sport so I've never been in the sports hall but 
it's very big. So over here is Heathfield. And Heathfield and Belmont, they all have the same layout. So if you've seen in one of them, you know the dimensions and the layout and stuff with the flats. They're all identical. And over here is where you collect your keys for all of the halls. This little office in here is where you get your keys. So I'm just going to have a little wander around Heathfield. So the whole of campus is not anywhere that people would drive through. So there are some cars, but generally no one's driving fast. It's very much got the feel of being a little campus bubble. Oh, I should introduce you to the seagulls. So Dundee has a lot of seagulls. They are ravenous. They will attack you for food, and I actually mean attack you, do not feed the seagulls. I had a friend who came out of Greg's the Baker's holding a sausage roll. A seagull swooped him and tore the sausage roll out of his hands and cut his finger. I think this Heathfield building is for the postgrads, and there's a lot of postgrad teachers that seem to live in there. Um, I don't know, there's nowhere in Belmont or Heathfield that's really, really quiet, so if you're from the countryside, that's gonna be fun adapting. I took a long time to adapt, and it was really, really fun. It was totally worth living in Belmont and Heath, well, Belmont for the year, even though it was really loud, but there is constantly parties in the courtyard, people smoking, people being loud, and you've got the road noise of being on the north side of Heathfield, and you've got the tennis noise of being on the south side of Belmont, so... Eh, I don't know. I think it's a bit of a gamble into which flat you actually get placed. I know some years it's a bit of a scramble, but they generally do try to house people who know each other and request it together. I did know a few people who did that in my first year. Royal Mail delivery carts. The Royal Mail do deliver to your actual door, which is cool. If you have any parcels that are too big or they can't deliver to you, they put them in that office that's on just around to the right there that you collect your keys from. And straight ahead is the Union that we were looking down to. So I'm gonna take you east, heading towards town again. And let's head towards Dalhousie, which is one of the main teaching buildings as well. So Dalhousie is the most difficult building to get around. And if I was to go back and give a little Emma starting uni some advice, it would be the code for how to actually get around Dalhousie. Loads of people have lectures here and absolutely no one knows how to read the system. So if you've made it this far in the video, you have earned this. There is a system of three parts to navigating your way around Dalhousie. You'll get a code that's like 1G03. The one means it's block one, which is on the right. Don't ask me why. G means ground floor, 03 is room three. It goes G for ground floor, F for first floor and S for second floor and then it's your room number. Another warning, buildings one and buildings two are not connected throughout. So if you have like a 1S03, you can't go up to the second floor in building two. Yep, I'm glad we all got that. I'm gonna move on. So I'm gonna carry on walking you east into town again. So if you need your groceries, um, I think Little is probably the first port of call. So I will walk you down to Little. If anyone is in quarantine, I would do a food delivery. Oh, here's Parlor Cafe. This is my favorite spot for lunch. It's really small, but they do tons of takeaways. This is all like veggie, all vegan, really, really tasty food. They do kind of salad boxes like paninis and salad boxes. It's amazing food in there. So yeah, if, oh, Gallery 48 is also good for food. They do tapasy stuff. You can tell I'm a foodie, right? <laughs> so if anyone's stuck in quarantine, I personally would do a grocery shopping from Asda. I have an Asda account and they do have a minimum spend of I think 35-ish pounds. Um, you could try and buddy up with a flatmate and get a group order. You choose a delivery slot time. 
and if you plan it right you can only pay a pound for your delivery and then they will take it straight to your door. Here is West House on the corner, that is a lovely lunch spot, they can be quite quick as well if you're running on a tight schedule just have an hour for lunch. And here is Little, this is where I would recommend is the cheapest student shop so you have to kind of go straight down and cross at the crossing and there is the best shop. Uh, here is the fanciest hotel if your parents want to come and visit. And here is Tesco. So Tesco is a small convenient shop but it's really expensive. I, uh, I've fallen into the trap of thinking it's closer and it's easier but it's quite expensive. So I'm just going to take you up in a loop and show you the private halls options. So on your right here you've got the hub. This has a really similar feel to Belmont and Heathfield. There's a courtyard to it. Um, yeah, it's quite first year -y. And then there is campus slightly further up. You need to know who you're going to stay with if you want to go into campus and they usually get filled up by halfway through the year. So campus has more of a second year feel to it. But these are both really studenty options. And the Dundee Mosque is down this road to the right. The building is gorgeous and it's always absolutely packed. So if you're Muslim, that would be the place to go. Just down there. Oh, and that red and blue building up there is the Aberté Halls. It's called Parker House, I think. It's got big IQ written on it. And that is where a lot of the Aberté students live. There is an underpass near there. I would say be careful when you're walking in that underpass, to be perfectly honest. And that is Duke's Corner. That is a nice pub. And here's Molly Malone's. This is also a nice pub. They do really good live music. Um, yeah, I don't want to scare you about the underpass. However, be very careful because I did have a friend who was kind of chased through there and I just happened to be driving past after and oh she was really spooked so be careful so if anyone hasn't managed to get into halls and is a first year panicking that they don't have anyone to live with this could be an option for you so this is the hub the main door is just down this street and on the left and they do student accommodation, it's shared kitchens and en suites, pretty standard. There's a courtyard in there as well so you get quite a similar vibe to Belmont and Heathfield, it's just that few minutes out of campus. I think it's cheaper. It has a very very student -y vibe. It's mostly first and second years that live in the hub and all of this front here that's the kind of white and brick is the hub all the way along. They've got lots and lots of flats and they do randomly assign some people, they do house people who know each other together as well. There are little laundrettes underneath, quite a similar setup. The only thing that's different is I don't think they deliver the mail to your flat, they just have pigeonholes at the front for you to collect with your own keys. And today is a really unusually warm day. It's not usually this hot in Dundee, it's 22 degrees. I should warn any international students, it is very cold in winter, so definitely get yourself a nice big jacket. Also for any international students, jaywalking isn't a thing, um, it's generally cross the road wherever you can and uh, don't get hit. <laughs> Also, if anyone's bringing a car to uni, I will give a little bit more information later on about where the best places to park are, because I took my car to uni in first year. So if anyone is into climbing, here is a climbing wall. This is called a vertical world. It is a climbing wall that's built in a church. Quite fancy. So this building straight ahead of us is the back of Dalhousie. So we're just kind of coming around in a loop again and I'll go back onto campus. The buildings you can see in red there are the very back of Heathfield. Up in that direction, there are a lot of houses, semi-detached houses with gardens and driveways. A lot of the second, third, fourth year students live in there. If you go all the way up that road, you do join onto Perth Road and head out West Parkway. I will take you out there 
afterwards. There are lots of taxis in the city. These should all have taxi plates on them. We don't do any Uber here. If you're wanting a oh, taxi ride, it's usually quite cheap. Say from the train station to campus is probably five pounds, if that. Um, and the uni also has a nice scheme that if you show your student card to the taxis in Dundee and you can't pay, you'll be able to pay them back if that's still running. So I usually phone Dundee City Taxis. No, they're not paying me, but uh, I always have a good experience with them. And they do give you a text with a location and your taxi reg, which I quite enjoy. Dundee also has a huge number of electric vehicles. I think like half of the taxi fleets that you will see are electric vehicles and there's charging points everywhere. This is my least favorite part of campus. Be very careful. So yeah, you can see this is the bit that's really hard to cross that I wanted the lollipop person on because it's a nightmare. There, there's big hedgerows. Can you imagine hundreds of students trying to get to campus? It is hell. It was built for cars, not for students. So this is where we came from. That's Heathfield on the right there. And this is the army base. So when I first moved into halls, I had a bunch of people from kind of the reserve army helping me carry my stuff up, which was amazing. Another lovely green space. So there used to be a building here that was demolished, I think had asbestos problems on the right hand side. And um, now they just left it green. So I think that's kind of a, a nice thing for the uni. I was expecting them to throw up some other building, but they just made it grass, which I think is lovely. Here is the civil engineering. They do a lot of engineering labs in there. So these assistance things are scattered all around uni. I've never pressed one. They kind of got put in when I was in third or fourth year. Luckily, I've never needed to use one, but apparently they do call campus security. So that is very handy. I, as I say, I used to go to the union all the time without my phone because I just lived so close. So that's kind of handy if you are without a phone and you do need assistance, you can get it. And this is us just scooping in again to the library and the chaplaincy there. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of really orientate you in this video because there's nothing worse than watching the kind of glossy official welcome videos and you don't really know where anything is they just either drone from one place to the next or I just jump and it doesn't really help you get around so if you've if you've still been watching this video i don't quite know why but i'm gonna give you two very high quality pieces of information especially if you're stuck in quarantine you might need this there is a website that you have access to called Bob International. It's kind of the Walmart Netflix. You will have access to everything that's ever played on TV in the UK. So they have all of the episodes of everything. It's quite good. You can't watch live TV on it, but you can request a program to be like downloaded quickly and you can get it within maybe an hour of it being live on TV. So I would recommend that. The second thing is, in my first year, I very naively purchased Microsoft Office for students. Don't do that. <laughs> you can get it free. So just have a wee search for it and you'll be able to download Microsoft all of the packages onto your devices. If you need any help, then you can email help for number four you. That's the IT help email if you need any assistance, but I think it's got much easier since I was in first year. So this is the back of the library and I'm just going to walk you through to pop out at the back of the union. So if anyone's thinking of getting a job, student jobs are pretty common. I'd say about half of my friends at undergrad had a job and it is less common at postgrad but it is still doable. So I had a job throughout my undergrad. In first and second year I worked 16 hours a week at a supermarket. Here is just the back of the union. And Later on in my undergrad, I then shifted to summer jobs in science research and I knew people who worked in retail, hospitality, so if you're looking for a job, I'd probably start in the Overgate shopping centre and along Perth Road would be the easiest that I can think of. Um, there are two types of contracts, set hours or zero hours. Ah, oh, this is the view. 
I'm gonna take you up on here two seconds so lovely so that is the Tay River that is to the south and just over the water about half an hour bus ride away is St Andrews so it's pretty close at the bottom of this road on the left there's the career service and these buildings apparently used to be halls they're mostly just offices now there's not very much teaching here but uh, yeah imagine living halls in there i think we got an upgrade if you're upstairs in liar bar which is like the one floor up you get this view sitting having your beer and oh i just love it so you can go in that door to the back of the union and I'm just going to walk you through to a really nice green space. So this area here does get used for the back of the nightclub. It's usually the smoking area and they do some food there in the daytime too. Sometimes barbecues and stuff. But this is Getty's Quadrangle. It's gorgeous. A lot of people come here for graduation photos and the gardeners do a truly wonderful job. And there's some people enjoying it. <laughs> Yeah, so if you're looking for a job, there's either zero hours contracts or set hours contracts. And I preferred to have a contract of 16 hours that was just slightly more stable for me. It meant I didn't have to worry about what my timetable was and booking shifts. And I don't know, it seemed the people who I knew had zero hours contracts seemed to have more stress about when they were working. So I didn't want to go through that. But anyway, you do what you think is best and uh, make sure you're being paid properly. There are uh, minimum wages. I've put the 2020 spreadsheet up so you can figure out how much is the minimum wage for you and it's legal to pay you less than that. So uh, don't work for anyone who's not treating you well. So here we're coming back down onto Perth Road. And here's the tea, just peeking behind. I don't know who decided to plant palm trees here, but uh, that was a wonderful decision because they make me smile. So Perth Road in this direction takes us to Seabreeze Halls and to West Park. And there are buses all along here. If you get the bus from the side that we're crossing to, that heads you out to Nine Wells. It just says Nine Wells on the front. And there are two bus companies that can take you there. And that is where we came from. That's the back of the Union up there. So Dundee is really famous for its video games industry. And here are the wee lemmings. They're super cute. And if you want a really big supermarket, there is a big Tesco that is down this flight of stairs and over the bridge. So it crosses over the railway line and you can walk down there. This Tesco isn't as expensive as the wee one that I told you to kind of avoid. Um, there it is. Oh, it's so beautiful. You can get a really good view over the water from the top of the Law Hill. That is quite a tradition in itself to walk up the law in the summer when the sun rises at like four in the morning. You gotta drunkenly walk up the law. I think it's like a graduation ball thing as well. Yeah, it's definitely tradition. So I am just about to jump in the car from exactly this point and I'll take you over to Seabreeze and West Park. So this road is called Rose Angle. I'm so sorry, I just chucked my camera on my dashboard because I didn't know what else to do. I was just out filming on my own. So apologies for the reflection and uh, I probably should have cleaned my windscreen. <laughs> my bad. Oh, there's also a lot of students who live down this way. At the end of this road, there is a gorgeous park called Magdalen Green. That is where everyone goes on a sunny day. So this is Seabreeze. Oh, this is a terrible shot. I'm sorry. So there's a wee set of stairs on the right there, if anyone is into that section. C 
Seabreeze has a reputation for having slightly more flat parties than Belmont or Heathfield, just because it's that tiny bit further out, so people uh, pre-drink a little bit more than head to the Union. On the left, there is the newer Seabreeze, and I think they do the postgrad places in there. And on the right, there is the older Seabreeze. And I think that straight ahead is where you would collect your keys. So Seabreeze also have a common room, um, which they don't have in the others, so that's really nice. And it tends to be the most social of all the halls. One thing I noticed when I was in Seabreeze was the bathrooms are kind of horrible. <laughs> so they're really small. They don't have like a shower tray. So you tend to just get shower water all over the floor, even though it is slanted. I was not a fan. And the walls in the old place are quite prison breeze blocky. But um, the new sea braves over on the right hand side there are completely the same as Belmont and Heathfield. It's just the sea braves on the left. They're slightly older. And Seabreeze is a really good place to stay if you have a car. You can pay for a permit to keep your car there. And generally this part of town is... Oh dear me, my camera is going AWOL. <laughs> I should not have just chucked my camera on the dashboard, but... Uh, I didn't have anyone to film with. So, down on the left... There is Magdalen Green, a lovely park that is great for barbecues and just having a chill time outside if you need to uh, socially distance meet anyone. I guess Magdalen Green is a lovely place to do that. All up here is free parking and kind of down the road back the way along Rose Angle is a really good place to park your car. That's where I parked my car in first year when I lived in Belmont. And along Perth Road, I will show you the free parking area. It's quite short. This is one of the buses that I think would be going to Nine Wells. So some of the buses you need to watch out and give them exact change. Um, that bus there, I think, was the 73. That's a pretty nice one that goes to Nine Wells. You can get on and uh, they usually have a conductor and they give you a student discount. So. That is one of the nice ones. So this piece of road here does have free parking. I'll let you know when it ends. And that building on the right coming up the glass front is the front of DJ CAD. So that's the art school. That has a very good reputation. So you can obviously take your car to Dundee, but honestly, unless you like regularly go home, everything within Dundee is walkable. And daylight hours in Scotland are interesting. So if you are coming to Scotland from anywhere closer to the equator, you are going to be in for a wild ride. So it's incredibly sunny in summer. The sun hardly ever sets. In midsummer, it's dark for less than six hours. And it's wonderful. Fast forward to winter and it's dark all the time. So there's about six hours of light in winter from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Oh, definitely by a sunrise alarm. Most Dundee Uni students who live in private rents will be within walking distance to campus. All along this road, Perth Road, each lane is very studenty, and I've made a terrible map of the high density student areas for Dundee Uni, and it's in pink. On the right hand side here, this is the community fridge. So in here, there is a little port cabin that's got fridges, freezers. It's pretty wonderful and you can get free food. They let anyone come and pick up free food, whether you financially need it or not. It's where all of the shops put their excess food. And Tartan Cafe is one of my favorites. So we'll just <laughs> jump back. I'm also gonna link the community fridge Facebook page. And all along Perth Road here, you've got lots of boutiques, art shops, and a music shop. So the little green larder is just on the left there. It's a zero waste shop. And there's the Boots Pharmacy on the left. Prescriptions are free to pick up in Scotland. And then Fraser's Fruit and Veg on the left on the corner is also wonderful. Oh, Pacamara, that light green on the left, was lovely for brunch. So here is just the little junction that um, when we were crossing over from the climbing wall over to the back of Dalhousie and I pointed up the hill, 
that's the road that comes out on the right where that caravan is over to the right. And if you're looking to privately rent anywhere, it's completely okay for first years to go into a private rent um, or I think most postgrads would probably go straight into a private rent. It is quite affordable. So when I was renting a two bedroom in 2019, it was 590 pounds per month and then add on 20 pounds for Wi-Fi and about 40 pounds for energy and gas. Um, I think it was on, honestly very, very affordable. I've heard of crazy rent prices, especially coming from Edinburgh. So Dundee is very affordable. I guess a one bedroom, you'd probably want to be paying about 450, a two bedroom, maybe 550, 600. And then the more people you share with, the cheaper it would be. If you're looking for a place all along Perth Road and to the left, down the hill, there's tons of lanes and they tend to be full of students. All of these houses you see on the left and on the right will be full of students as well. So this is really the the student area of town. Um, you can also live in the centre of town, it just tends to be older builds so I find them colder and I'm not as big a fan. When I'm looking for a flat I will make sure that it's got double glazing and gas central heating and personally I just don't like to live on the ground floor for security. Also, I would recommend that you avoid Rockford property and Grant property. I have had friends who've had problems with them keeping deposits and uh, advertising looking nicer than it really is. But yeah, know your rights. Renting in Scotland is pretty good. You just, everyone's on a one month rolling contract unless you sign something, you know, particularly different. So all you need to do is uh, give one month's notice and leave and always sort your Wi-Fi in advance of moving in because they usually have a wait time. <laughs> just an FYI. So this is just coming into West Park now. West Park on the inside is completely the same as Belmont and Heathfield and it tends to be really popular with medical students because it's that bit closer to Nine Wells. I have to say West Park probably has the reputation for being the fanciest of all the halls and that's because it's beside West Park Villas. Straight ahead, this is West Park. So the lower numbers of flats start on the right hand side and the villas are up to the left and the place where you collect your keys is also up to the left. West Park is another great place to keep your car if you have one. There's more parking through the gap in those buildings and round up the back. Um, it tends to be much quieter. That is the end of the line. So that is my campus tour. I hope that was useful. There is no amount of Google Maps dropping yourself in and having a nosy that really give you the feel for the place. Like it's just so difficult. And especially with this being a coronavirus year, I know a lot of people will not have been able to come and actually see the place. So if you have any specific questions, absolutely feel free to leave them in the comments. Feel free to stick around and subscribe. I also did uh, what I love and what I hate about Dundee University. So you know what to do and don't forget to pack earplugs and Tupperware and I will see you in the next video. Bye!